All right, we're back. We are on page 169 and we are talking about conic sections. And so what are conic sections? Well, if you think about the word conic of a cone, sections are sections of a cone. So what, what they are really is you take a cone and you intersect it with a plane and you see what you get. So it's like you have a, a, sh a cake, I guess, that's in the shape of a cone and you're gonna cut it. And the knife is a plane and you cut it at various angles and you know horizontal, vertical, to the side, whatever, um, you see what shapes you can get. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna switch over to a GeoGebra file. It's not actually one that I made. I definitely made one at some point, but I couldn't find it. Um, but this is a really good looking one. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of run through it. So we have a cone. Now a cone might not look like what you think a cone will look like. Uh, can I rotate the cone? I don't really know. Um, no, apparently I can't. So uh, we have a cone that it, it kind of looks like two cones, right? Uh, mathematically, algebraically, this is a cone. The cone allows for, because there's a lot of squared stuff in the equation of a cone. Uh, in fact, everything is squared. It allows for negative uh, values as well. So we end up with one cone on top, which is like the ice cream cone that you would hold up, and then one cone on the bottom, which is like an upside down ice cream cone. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a plane and we're just gonna pass it through the cones. And you can see on the right hand here, this is showing you the intersection. It's what the intersection of the plane, this green thing, um, and the cone will look like. And we can, you can see here, it's a circle. And right now, the angle at which this plane is tilted uh, is zero. And if I tilt it, you can see things happen. So first of all, when I tilt it like this, you get a shape that is called an ellipse. An ellipse is like a circle. So this is where you're trying to cut the cake and you're just like off. You, you, you're going for horizontal, but you're off by a little bit. And you're like, what shape is this? This is mathematically called an ellipse. So we could get a circle when we go exactly horizontal, like straight across, get a circle. Um, here, we're on a slant, and but not an extreme slant, right? We haven't gotten to 45 degrees. We're between zero and 45 degrees. We're getting an ellipse. We can move it up and down and you see what you get. Um, now let's tilt it a little bit more. So I'm gonna get to uh, 45, so 45 degrees. Let me move up and down. You probably recognize this shape that you're seeing. Uh, this is a parabola. So, so far we've got a circle, uh, which you recognize hopefully, an ellipse, which kind of looks like an oval. I think most people would call it an oval before they learn the mathematical name. Um, and then a parabola. So parabolas are like what you studied in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. We're going we're gonna to talk about the geometric properties of them, but they're the same thing. So like y equals x squared is an example of a parabola. So that's when we're at exactly 45 degrees. I'm going to tilt it a little bit more. Um, and now we're getting a weird shape. So you might, so, well, I don't know if you could recognize this one. Uh, this is a hyperbola. So y equals one over x is a hyperbola. It's probably the most famous hyperbola, but no one notices that it's a hyperbola because you don't really talk about it that way. Hyperbolas have two branches because you're intersecting the top and bottom cone. It's the only one where that happens. The other ones you're either intersect. So let me go back to 45. You're either intersecting the top cone or the bottom cone, but not both. There's one instance where you're intersecting both. Let me see if I can get it again. There, you get a line. So another possibility is a line. We have a, a circle, an ellipse, a parabola, a hyperbola, a line. Um, let me go back to exactly zero. You can get a point. So now we have a point line. Um, and there's one other thing that you can get, which uh, let me see if I can get, oh yeah, I got it. A pair of intersecting lines. These are all the things you can get when you cut a cone with a plane. These are the conic sections, all right? So those are geometrically where they're coming from um, in three dimensions. I'm gonna go back to the notes. We're primarily gonna be concerned with two dimensions as we go through this process. Um, but I think it's good to know like, why are they called conic sections? Well, because of cones, but cones are three dimensional things. We somehow managed to reduce it down to just two dimensions uh, because we're looking at literally the intersection in the plane. So the plane for us will be the XY plane. And it's like the cone is moving in that uh, GeoGebra sketch. Uh, which I'll link to in the description. Uh, in the GeoGebra sketch, the uh, cone, the plane was moving and the cone was staying still. 
we're going to take the plane as the x, y plane and move the cone up and down to get our shapes. Uh, algebraically, you wouldn't probably come up with this, but all conic sections can somehow be rewritten like this, or can be written like this, I should say. Um, so this is the general form because all of them can look like this. So we got ax squared, by squared, cx, dy, and e. There's actually another term that I don't usually put in, that I actually never put in. It's an xy term, and it would go between uh, here, um, and because it, it's another quadratic term, x times y has degree two because it's x to the first, y to the first, um, so overall degree two. So we don't use that. That will tilt it. Everything we do is going to be kind of like uh, parallel to the y-axis, parallel to the x-axis. Like all the key things are going to be vertical and horizontal moves. If you have that xy term, sometimes they're like at an angle, and that's going to be really hard to deal with. So we don't want to deal with that. But there were seven possible things. And so you need to just know their names right now. So you can get a point, a line, a pair of intersecting lines. Those are called degenerate cases because they're not really parts of a conic section. Uh, they're not really parts of a cone. They're just like things that coincidentally showed up. Then you can get the real ones, a circle, an ellipse, a hyperbola, and a parabola, which actually are not really in the order in which they show up. You really get circle, ellipse, parabola, hyperbola. But the first three are called degenerate cases. Um, the next ones are the real conic sections. There is a template on the Inspire, we'll get to that eventually, um, that we can use for these. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop this video here. I'll come back and actually start doing the problems, which are all about circles uh, in the next video. So I will see you there. This is like a good introduction. Look in the description for a link to the GeoGebra thing and play around with it a little bit and see if you can uh, make all of the different conic sections and degenerate cases show up and I will see you in the next video.